ECG Solax sent this 60 amp EG4860 solar charge controller. So let's have a look at it and we'll hook it up and test it out and just kind of see what it's all about. It comes with a little hardware package with some brackets that you can use for mounting it. It comes with all this protective covering on the case. You know, you got that plastic, it won't quite come out of there. It's like they made the parts first and were covered with that protective coating. And then they screwed the thing together. And <laughs> Anyway, it has a unique look to it and I'm curious about it. So let's check it out and see what we get. They do sell them on Amazon. I'll put a link if you want to get more information about it. That's uh, kind of interesting. Let's see, it says... Model EG4860, current 60 amps, voltage. It's either 12, 24, 36, or 48. Supposedly it detects the battery bank voltage and adjusts automatically. It says maximum PV voltage is 150 volts. Maximum PV input power is 720 watts at 12 volts, 1440 watts at 24 volts, 2100 watts at 36 volts, and 2,800 watts at 48 volts. My guess is this is a just a kind of a generic charger that's marketed by several different companies. I've seen what looked to be the same charger with a different faceplate on it. So kind of some clicky buttons. Got four of them up here and a small screen. And then on the bottom, you've got all the connections. So you've got a, a load section where you can put a positive negative out. You've got battery terminals here in the middle, a plus and a minus, and then PV terminals, a plus and a minus. Let's have a quick look at this manual. It says MPPT solar charge controller. Gives a product type, EG4860. Sealed lead acid, gel, flooded, Lithium 4 cell, lithium 8 cell, so this would be a 12 volt, a 24 volt. Lithium 15 cell would be a 48 volt. And then a lithium 16 cell, which would be a 51.2 volt, I believe. So it'll do all those different types of batteries, apparently. 61 amp limited current protection for the output. Some temperature protections. And I noticed the unit has a built-in fan. It's got some vents on the side to let air in and probably bring air across the components and help cool it. Let's hook it up and see what happens. So I've got this connected to a 12 volt lithium battery. So this charge controller automatically detects the voltage of your battery bank. When you first power it up, you come up to this first screen and this first main interface screen, there's four different screens. So you've got this first one, up here you've got like a moon looking thing which is showing that there's no solar coming into it. And this is the PV information, so your solar array, voltage and wattage. Over here you've got a light bulb and load. So if you connect a load to this then it'll show you that that's operating or that there's power going out to the load. And then a battery symbol. It also has a backlight as you can see. But the backlight only stays on for a short period of time, which is fine for usage, long enough for you to do what you need to do. It's just a little bit difficult when you're trying to demonstrate this because it keeps shutting off. The next page will bring you to the battery information. So you've got battery voltage. My battery is currently at 13.3 volts. And amperage, if there's power going into the battery. Then you've got temperature. And I'm not sure what this for voltage over here, but the temperature in Celsius is 20.8. So it gives you internal temp, I believe, of the charge controller itself. And then it'll go to this page, which gives you the faults. Number 18, and there is a table in the instruction book for the troubleshooting. Number 18 just shows your input PV voltage is low. It's zero. We don't have any power connected on the incoming or PV connections as of yet. We'll turn on the uh, benchtop power supply shortly and I'll simulate some solar input. And then you have a sub panel. So you can push the program here and it takes you to the sub panel pages. 
So you've got the first one, D00, and this is for load working time. So if you had a load connected, like for instance, a lot of people will put a light on a timer. You can set a timer in this mode up to 24 hours and then everywhere in between. So I just have it set to zero at the moment. And then it'll run the power to the load for the set time and then it'll disconnect or shut off. The next one from the zero zero is going to be zero one. And this is the default float charge 13.8 based on your battery type. D02 is the highest absorption charge, so it's set a default 14.2. D03 is going to be protection value of the battery discharge. So it'll shut off the discharge once it reaches that voltage, whatever voltage you set. It's currently set at 11 volts. D4 is used to calibrate the battery voltage. So if you need to make a calibration change, if it's not reading correctly, you can hit this button and change that using the up and down arrows if it wasn't correct, if you wanted to make a uh, calibration adjustment. And then D5, here's where you select the battery type. So you can press this enter button, it'll start to flash and then use the up and down arrows to select between the different options. And there's quite a few options. So we've got gel, sealed lead acid, and then four lithium. So you've got 16 cell lithium, 15 cell, an eight cell lithium, and a four cell lithium. Flooded, and then you have a user mode if you've got a custom battery that you wanna program I'm connected to a four cell lithium, so we'll leave it right here. Press enter and it'll hold that setting. And I believe that's it in the sub menus. One through five. And that's it. So we can go back to the main page. Um, that's the PV page. And then we've got the battery page. So I'm gonna turn on the uh, benchtop power supply. And now you notice we've got some changes happening. You've got a sun up here showing that you've got solar to your panels and it's charging the battery and then it gives you the voltage of the battery and the amperage. And it's going to fluctuate a little bit while the MPPT floats around and tries to find the maximum power point and then it'll kind of steady out after that. And now that we have power coming in, the fault page is blank. There just is no fault indications at all there. So I'm going to turn this power supply up to its max, which is 30 volts. Let's go back to the PV side and see what we can get maxed out. It may not be indicating 30, but it is maxed out. So we're showing 20 volts and 195 watts. Let's see what the uh, battery is showing. See, now we're up to 16 amps when we're only getting 10 out of the power supply. So it's definitely an MPPT charge controller, and that is a huge benefit. It makes it uh, real nice. This cooling fan is the temp control that's built in, and this is like the first charge control I've seen with a built-in cooling fan. And I'll show you a little clip here where I warmed up the case with a heat gun to uh, see if the fan comes on. And it comes on almost exactly where the manual says it's programmed. So here it shows the, the protection function at uh, greater than 45 degrees or 104 Fahrenheit, the fan will come on. And when it cools down to less than 40 or 95 Fahrenheit, the fan will shut off. I have been heating it up. We're up to 45 degrees Celsius and the fan is on. So let me turn this heat gun off and we'll listen to that fan. So that's not too awful loud and it looks like that cooling fan system actually works just like it's advertised. And it is bringing that temperature down slowly but surely. and the fan just shut off. 
at about 40 degrees Celsius. So it comes on at 45 and turns off at 40 Celsius. And it worked just exactly as described in the manual. It's also not very loud, the fan, so that was nice as well. We're getting almost 20 amps out of the MPPT, so almost doubling the output amps on the power supply. It's bouncing around 1920 and we're seeing about 10 amps coming out of the power supply. Let's go back to the PV. So we did get up to the 30 volts and we're pushing 250, 280 on wattage. That's going into the battery. And we can check the temperature. It's not very warm in here, but it is increasing as it works a little bit. 27.6 on Celsius. So it is a neat little charge controller. I think it's uh, apparently so far works quite well. I'm going to attempt to uh, connect this up to a 48 volt battery system at some point in the future. When I do, I'll show you that video. But uh, we'll give it a real test with the solar array and we'll see how it, how it actually does. But out of the box, with this simulated solar panel using the benchtop power supply, it appears to be functioning just as it indicates in the manual. I do like the backlight. I like its size. I like the fact that the whole case is, uh, is a heat sink and you've got this cooling fan. Also, by the looks of it, it's not rated for any outdoor use with any moisture at all. None of the cracks are sealed. It's not a sealed case or anything like that. So you probably definitely need to keep it dry, even from just a light sprinkling of, our, of rain, I would think, could potentially damage it. Interesting little solar charge controller. Click the video on the screen now if you want to see another one of my videos, and I'll meet you over there.